got me just finishing writing my Valentine's Day cards. It's an opportunity, of course, for us to think about those that we love, an opportunity to thank them for uh, being so lovable, perhaps, or beloved. Um, and of course, that's the theme of today's service. The beloved, my beloved, our beloved. This is Valentine's Day, and it's also Transfiguration Sunday, when we hear God telling uh, all of us that Jesus is God's beloved. He's our beloved too, and through Jesus, we are God's beloved as well. Join me in finding uh, a, a warm heart in the service today as we reflect on uh, those that we love and our own belovedness. Welcome to St. Luke's and Grace Episcopal Churches this Sunday. Because the transfiguration is so bizarre and unusual, it can be easy to assume that we're supposed to approach it with sober reverence and awe. But I don't think that's how God views it. For God, the transfiguration presents an opportunity to declare love for the one called Son. If God is capable of smiling, this would be the occasion in which that happens. I don't see how anyone can talk of one's beloved without breaking into a pleased grin. That's how lovers talk to and about each other. We hear the words, this is my beloved son in whom I take delight. At the transfiguration then, we are in the presence of delight. Delight as an aspect of the holy, its tender holiness. The scene is a reminder that holiness as a characteristic of God is hands-on and shared. God loves, so God interacts. This holiness expresses itself in self-giving, for that's what happens when someone adores and celebrates someone else. Take delight in Jesus, for God does. As God expresses this delight, we gain a little more insight into the divine heart. The bright light of the transfiguration affirms life, a light that shines ahead into Lent to keep that season in perspective, never without hope and confidence. This light speaks a promise that God is here and that God is knowable. God seeks relationship because God is life. So let us rejoice in the beloved Son of God and the light of his mercy and love as we say together the confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. God of peace, it was only in you we find real love. Call us and shine your dream of your love in our hearts that we may better love and serve you. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. The reading for the sixth Sunday of Epiphany from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elijah, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prof the company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, The Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. 
the company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what may I do for you before I am taken from you? Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elijah kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Word of the Lord. The amazing thing about glow sticks is the way that they have all of the materials they need to shine, right? You just snap it. and it starts to glow but it's not like you needed to add anything extra it was just a different action and what was already inside started to glow and I was thinking about that with Jesus in today's story right Jesus was just you know ordinary 
right? This is, this is the person that, that Peter and James and John usually saw when they had breakfast or lunch together or when they would talk and have conversations or laugh or share their concerns. And then in today's story, the materials that were already in Jesus started to shine. There was this special moment. You know, some Christians say that God became like humans so that humans can become like God. And I'm thinking about that with today's story. Are you feeling not very shiny these days? Maybe you're tired of wearing masks and keeping distant, and maybe you miss hugs. I'm not feeling very shiny these days either. But the good news of today's story is that God's love God calls Jesus the beloved. God's love is inside us. Whether we feel shiny or not, whether we're happy or not, whether we're able to love people the way we wish we could, if we only weren't so tired, that's still in us, whether we're shining or not. Shining or not. And what we need is just God's Holy Spirit to activate us, to get us, all the materials that are already in us, to shine. Because God loves us. That's, that's the message for today. That's what the transfiguration teaches us. You don't have to do anything or prove that you're good. It's God who's the one doing the work. It's God that sees the shiny material inside of us. Maybe it's not activated yet, but God calls us beloved. God looks at us and sees Jesus transfigured. That was true 2,000 years ago, and it's true today.
This is the last Sunday in the season of Epiphany. It's a strange season, and it's always bookended with two stories that remind us of our place, both as a beginning and as a continuation toward whatever's next. We start off this season of Epiphany with this um, story of Jesus' baptism, his beginning of his ministry. And we hear that voice from heaven, this is my son, the beloved. This week, of course, on the, the Transfiguration Sunday, or we hear the story of the Transfiguration, we again hear that same statement from heaven. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And I think it's a wonderful um, way to begin and end this season, because this season of Epiphany is a season of light. And it's a season where we remember that we're on a journey, like the three wise men on the Feast of the Epiphany. And Lent is the season that begins with us just around the corner here. We're on a journey uh, through this life of faith. And it can be difficult sometimes. And so in the story we hear of this uh, gospel story this Sunday, we hear Jesus taking a couple of his good buddies, his, his own beloved friends, up the hill with him to have this important moment. The text says that he was transformed or transfigured in front, in front of their very eyes. And the two figures also illumined showed up, Moses and Elijah, two significant figures that um, were kind of the, the beginning of the end kind of figures that were precursors to God's imporing of grace in the current moment. And so Peter kind of gets scared. Uh, he's not sure what to do. He says, well, let's build a couple booths. Let's build some houses for you guys, and let's just hang out here forever. And I think he does that for a good reason, because I think he knows what's next. He knows that Lent's around the corner. In fact, the, the story that precedes this story right in the gospel, if you were to look, is Jesus telling his disciples that they have to pick up their own cross and die to themselves, to, to themselves and, and to continue on this journey that, and that he himself will die and then be raised again. And so Peter is up there on this mountain in this special moment. And I think he wants to, 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 to remember it so much so. He wants to live there that he suggests to Jesus that they should build these houses and then live on the mountaintop. This is definitely a mountaintop experience. And as you all know, when you get to a mountaintop, you have incredible views. You, you finally, things make sense. But you know you can't live up there on top of the mountain. There's not food enough for yourself to sustain, and there's not um, uh, really a shelter. Even if you were to build a shelter, it's too windy, it's too, the weather's too inclement. You can't live on top of a mountain very successfully. And so Jesus kind of says, no, we're not building a house. And then there's that voice from heaven. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. I was thinking this week that what this story really is, is kind of a, a snapshot of sorts. We all have those moments in our lives where there's a picture that helps us remember the special moment. Yeah, I'm sure you have pictures uh, in your childhood kind of like this one, or maybe like this one that kind of remind you of, of that early family time that you had, of those people that you cherished in your life and the way that they, they, they loved you and looked at you with eyes that clearly communicated, you are my son, you are my daughter, my beloved. And I think those pictures are super important for us to remember and hold on to. I have a picture this day as well. This is a picture, of course, uh, of my two sons and I from a couple years ago. I think it was actually 2016 or 2017, so it's at this point quite dated. And 
we were at Glacier National Park, and so there's this uh, with um, Glacier uh, right, right behind us. And I remember just how important of a moment that was. I was climbing around on the ice in the middle of July in Montana and having an incredible experience. And we took this picture as a reminder of that experience. And these two are my two beloved boys. I love them more than anything in the whole world. And they can do no wrong, uh, mostly. Uh, and it's an opportunity for me to remember them as they were in that moment. And as much as I cherish that moment, I don't want them to be stuck there. Stuck as children who don't have autonomy, who aren't growing, who aren't learning to be better humans. I want them to continue to grow. And I think that's really at the heart of this, this story of transfiguration. God doesn't want us to be content as, as little children. Uh, God wants us to grow. God wants us to understand more of, of God's story for us. But he gives us uh, snapshots like this to help us remind ourselves what things are important. Jesus is that, that snapshot for us of uh, this moment in time where the glory peeks out, the things that in, are inside of us, the shiny things, the resplendent nature that sometimes is hidden away from our own selves, kind of cracks open and we can see it. And so we see it in Jesus as a way of finding the light and the glory that's inside of us. And when a picture is taken appropriately, the light just kind of shines in the subjects. And I think that's what God wants us to do as well, to shine. Not just one moment in time, but on each day and each minute and each second to let the beauty of God's love for us shine. Can you imagine how much you would shine, not only with your smile and your eyes, but your whole being, if you could feel that warm embrace of God's love? If you could hear that voice of God inside of yourself saying, you are my beloved, with you I am well pleased. Listen. Listen to that true nature of who you are inside yourself. It's an invitation for, for you to know that God loves you, that you have this bright, shiny light inside yourself, that God placed there, God's self, to help you see that the journey that we're on is a journey that continues. That we're continually walking and moving through our lives, through the difficult valleys, through those valleys of the shadow of death. Sometimes up to mountaintops with beautiful views. But we're constantly moving. Moving through all of the things of life until we finally realize who we're called to be and whose we are that we are the beloved, that God loves us more than we can imagine. So on this Valentine's Day, I want to issue a Valentine to you, a Valentine from God, so that you will know that you are God's own beloved. There's nothing you can do to separate you from God's love. And I want you to experience that, to feel it in your bones, to feel it as you walk through each day. So. Maybe this could be a moment where you take a mental snapshot in your own heart of feeling the warmth of God's love, knowing that you are God's beloved child. Hold on to that as nourishment as we continue to, to wade through these difficult days ahead, uh, knowing that our hearts are restless until they finally rest in God. May you find peace on this Valentine's Day, and may you be the love that God has for you. Amen. Let us pray. In gratitude for this moment, this place, those around us, Christ among us, we give ourselves in love to you, our God. Take us out to live as changed people because we have met the transfigured Christ and cannot be the same. Ask much of us, enable much by us, encourage many through us, that we may shine forth your glory as God's beloved, with whom God is well pleased. Let us hear your word of love, spoken in Scripture, to renew our trust in its breadth and depth, that we may find renewal and be your love in the world. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. 
Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was revealed among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through Jesus Christ. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his Son that sins might be forgiven. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought also to love one another. For if we love one another, God abides in us, and God's love will be perfected in us.